Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Yes, if this feels a little bit familiar, it is because this is a follow-up video um, on the Hammock uh, 8001-2 mainframe module. And I got a new plug-in module. And this one is the 8014 milli ohm meter plug-in and thank you very much uh, Peter for lending me this fantastic module and I will play with this today I got a little bit more um, clever on this um, hammock mainframe so I will start with a little uh, update on the mainframe and uh, if you want the full um, explain about the the mainframe uh, please uh, go to my previous video released about two months ago i will put a link in the description let's look a little bit on their web page um, here we find the modular system 8000 and they explain a lot about this being a space saving um, kind of a thing and that is of course uh, very smart because a uh, the technical setup of all your instruments that will be um, different from user to user depending on what kind of stuff you're um, you're designing or repairing or whatever uh, kind of work you're doing so of course you need different instruments and uh, so so with this um, modular uh, system here you can buy exactly those uh, modules you need and plug them into a number of um, uh, mainframes and you can have two uh, modules in each uh, mainframe also if you see uh, the top uh, of those uh, of the mainframes we've got those four plastic feet holders and they of course matches the other one so they are really nice and uh, stable on top of each other and also they match with other hammock instruments like their oscilloscopes. If we continue to browse a little bit on their webpage, it seems like you can still uh, buy the system 8000, but I'm not really sure if that is uh, the case. I think that uh, Rude Swatch actually purchased the uh, hammock, and if you go to Rude Swatch webpage, you can't really find anything. So I think it's because they kind of wanted to discontinue it or their searcher is not working at the moment. Let's look a little bit on the available modules. I got here, here in, uh, in this video, I'm covering the 8014, the milli ohm meter. And in my previous uh, video, I covered um, 8027 distortion meter and 8037 the low distortion generator and then they show um, also the 8012 that's a four and three quarter digital programmable multimeter and the 8021 1.6 gigahertz universal counter and they also show the 8040 triple power supply and the 8018 LCR meter and the 8030, the 0 to 10 megahertz function generator. And then they show the HM800, a blank module. And I think that is really nice. So a, a, a technical guy could kind of make his own instrument for whatever kind of stuff he wanted on his um, workbench. Uh, this is just a super nice uh, plug-in module with all the power supplies and stuff available. And that is, of course, what we also want to show here. We want to show from the service manual. We want to show the, um, the connector in the, in the panel in the, in the mainframe. And if you um, see a little bit closer on this um, 22 pin connector here you'll see uh, first pin 123 that's actually a uh, optional uh, coax cable that goes to the rear side of your uh, mainframe uh, my mainframe don't have that option 
So it is a like a little upgrade kind of thing. You can buy the mainframes with those um, uh, coax cables and the BNC uh, connectors, and it's quite easy to to upgrade if you want to do this uh, yourself. Uh, you don't have the need, so I don't uh, want to do that. Then let's look at the next page in the service manual. That is the schematic uh, of uh, the power supplies. The individual power supplies everything is completely individual uh, of course because you want to uh, be able to plug in uh, different uh, modules and you don't want them to interfere with each other and you want to have great isolation so here i'm just uh, showing the left side uh, connector uh, of course the right one is more or less uh, the same but if you if you st we start with the very bottom power supply here there is a fixed 5.0 volt uh, fixed uh, power supply and that uh, is uh, on pin 4 there's of course a trimmer on the power supply where you can fine adjust uh, to uh, 5 volt exactly and the whole idea is here that your plug-in modules don't need a, a local power supply or anything else or any regulators or anything they just run straight off that 5 volt so that's perfectly fine then you have an unregulated uh, power supply about uh, 8 volts on pin 6 and that is uh, for your convenience if you want to create your own local 5 volt uh, of course you need a voltage that is a little bit higher than that so you're free to use that one so let's skip to the to the top power supply here because that is the the interesting uh, power supply really uh, we've got two of those but this is the first one so uh, here on pin 9 so if you go to pin uh, 9 and have a look if we go to some resistor uh, some resistors and then a trimmer so the whole idea about this is that the individual modules the different modules will have a different rs resistor so that will program each of those two um, outputs to exactly that voltage needed in that particular module so it's super smart that you don't need to go inside your mainframe and uh, adjust the left or the right side or the positive or the negative and all those things to each individual module no you can just freely pro uh, plug uh, a module uh, of whatever type you want and then you get exactly that voltage that you need um, if we look a little bit more in the schematic here there's another little uh, uh, thing that you will see and that is the the dotted lines between uh, pin 20 18 or 19 so the whole idea is here that uh, depending on the output voltage range uh, you can configure more or less voltage to go into um, the capacitors and of course also uh, more or less voltage over your series regulator uh, that will of course help uh, minimizing heat uh, loss in in that regulator so so that's real smart and if you don't need that output all you have to do is not uh, connect any of those uh, connections and that means this entire power supply is uh, completely turned off as well so that is uh, also a very uh, smart way to do it you can of course also uh, use the ac uh, here and have your own uh, local regulators and you're also free to use the other uh, ac output that is between uh, 21 and 22 so I really like this uh, the modular uh, system here with all those different voltages, all those different uh, options. It's very, very easy to, uh, to interface to. Let's look a little bit on this uh, milliohm meter uh, plug-in here. It is the HM8014 and this is of course brand new from a box. <laughs> oh, that is so nice. So, of course, I got also the manual for it. And uh, we got a few funny features. Um, of course, they sell this as a milliohm meter. And then there is a probe input. That is the, this is the better quality DIN uh, with a screw in here. I kind of like this uh, connector. And they're very, very easy to get. It's just a regular five pin yeah, Dean, and we got five pins, right? And we got two cables here, and at the end of the cable, it just goes 
So this is this is the standard cable that comes with the with the plug-in module, and it just looks like this. What I think we got here is two wires in each of those cables, and they're of course connected uh, very near the end here, right? So so it's not a true Kelvin connection, but we have something that is very very close to zero ohm here. So let's go to milliohm. So the fun thing here is that we have those two, we have actually three ranges, but we have them two times. So if we take that one, we follow the line, and now I am in the 20 ohm range. 2000 milliohms or 200 milliohm full range, right? So of course this is how, how hard I can press Ooh, I'm pressing as hard as I can, and I get three milliohms in this range, right? So I think we should try and demonstrate milliohm measurements, and uh, I think that is possible because let's look a little bit in the manual. So here's the manual. It starts with German, but then we can just carry on a few pages, and then it's in English. So that's quite nice. I think I was actually just really. We will have a Frenchie, oh yeah, how nice. So there's uh, something here for everybody's taste. So that will be the different ranges. And it says, uh, oh yeah, we also got uh, diode testing after three volts. Mm, I was looking for its accuracy. So in the, okay, all the small ranges, it's plus minus two digits. So that is up to 200 milliohms and to 220 ohms, right? And over that, we have plus minus one digit. Interesting. But what I want to see, and that is exactly here. So this is this will be the pinout. And I think I'll go and see if I can find a connector. And then I will try and make a true four point connection and see if I'm able to uh, measure one million. What did I just say? Did I just call this a regular DIN? No, it is not. <laughs> Look at that one. The one here to the right. That is a regular DIN. That one here is a little bit different. It's not a big problem. Of course I got this. But it's just uh, something that you need to be aware of. I think this is gonna work. Um, that will be my little sense interface cable. What I've done is I've, as you can see here, the to two top wires that's sense, and the other two is, that will be the signal. It's pulling some cur a known current between those two, and then it's measuring the voltage drop between those two. So what I've done is I marked the two sense signals because those are interesting. Um, let's just start with something that is a little bit easier. Here is a 100 milliohm resistor, and I am at the moment measuring as close as I can to the resistor, right? So that will be, give me a little bit unrealistic low reading. And if we go here, this is of course also a four point measurement before soldering, so it's 97 milliohms. So that is what we uh, want to aim for, right? So that is, uh, this is where I want to put my sense wires, and then I can put my signal wires, it doesn't matter where they are, right? But it's the sense wires that's important. Ah, oh, that actually works. I really think that we have the same uh, value as before. Ah, ah, mana, mana. So I have actually 0 0.1 in resolution. So this is 1 milliohm, right? Wow, nice. Not bad at all. And of course, if I short all those four wires, I should be able to calibrate 0 here. But I don't want to touch anything because it actually uh, seems like it's uh, working. Wow, nice. So this one is supposed to be 
10 milliohms, 5%. I've just been soldering on it. It started 20 and now it's getting down. So how, how the heck is this so temperature dependent? It's from 1980, so it's more than 40 years old, um, this resistor. But it's quite funny to see it's really that temperature dependent. Wow. Where is it? Let's try and see if it is... Oh, where is it? Here we go. We can be real... We can be real bad here. Let's uh, try and... So now I'm cooling it down. So yes, a very smart temperature sensor. That is what we got here, right? That's not even that cold. Now it's cold. Well, look at that. It is completely temperature dependent. This is not how you want your uh, high power sense resistor to uh, to act. So that is absolutely useless. How amazing. I'm going to throw this out. So this is 10 minutes later. <laughs> and here, there you have it. You are 10 milliohms. Oh my God. Goodness. Okay, let's uh, let's play with some of the other funny features here. You're going to enjoy this fantastic feature here. So I don't know if you have already noticed this, but there's a volume and a connector for headphones. So of course there's a built-in speaker, and uh, uh, of course you can use the headphones if you're sitting and doing debugging and there's somebody else in the room. You're gonna you're gonna create a lot of uh, unfriendly faces, definitely. <laughs> so, uh, if you're doing um, like comparing two different boards, for example, one is working and the other one is not working, and you're just uh, jumping around uh, completely uh, randomly to see if you can find where is the spot of a difference. Uh, probably you don't have a schematic and you want to do some debugging around. So, in that case, I think this uh, feature could be very useful. Um, this is a 50k uh, potentiometer. So what I'm doing is I am in now in the 20 kilo ohm range. That is the highest range. This is of course made for low resistance, but and not a uh, mega ohms or giga ohms or anything like that. So in this uh, range, I am now out of range, and that means the audio generator is not generating any audio. Quite nice when it's open, right? So let's try and change the resistance. Ooh, hear that? So it generates a tone that correlate to the range of that. Um, it, it's actually, it repeats again in the different ranges, right? The same tone. So a very high tone is uh, connectivity and no tone is open. <laughs> so you can really easy see if you're pinpointing something so this is the tone you're going for right and then you go from one circuit to the other circuit so you don't need to look at the at the value here and, and also if you're comparing stuff value doesn't really matter it, it doesn't matter what what the value is you want to, to see uh, seek a difference so I kind of like it. I think it's in quite interesting. So let's, uh, I think we're done playing with the, with the features here. And I think we want to see what is inside the module. There's only one tiny little thing I need to, um, to warn about. And that is the modules aren't really locked or screwed in or anything like that. So uh, when you want to unplug them, all you have to do is just pull. So that means if you are have a mainframe that has been used a lot by plugging in many different modules, obviously you could imagine that the connector will get looser and looser. So when you're transporting the mainframe, of course, always transport it with the modules up or sideways, never down. So you're going to drop one of these out and it's going to go directly to the floor, right? But here in my mainframe here, I need to pull quite hard to get them out 
but I am a little bit worried about that because I don't find any little locking or something like that. I could have really wanted to have a little screw or something like that. Oops. Yeah, here's the speaker. Yeah, we gotta open that one. Just some screws here at the back. What else can we what else can we see? Hammock inspected. Is there a so this is made in France, how nice. But there's, I think this is a date, but what year? We'll have to, we'll have to open it and have a look. Let's look a little bit inside. So this is the bottom. And it's actually a quite beautiful single layer PCB. I find it a little bit funny with the holes here for the speaker. Why didn't they just cut out an entire hole like that? <laughs> I don't know why. It's just a little bit funny. Uh, looks like it was machined and hand soldered. We got a few soldering here. I kind of like the interface to the to the display. See, it's just solder here and uh, you are done with big hefty distances so even a kid could have uh, assembled this without uh, creating shorts and problems see nice big isolation distance and stuff like that if we look at the top side here i think it's quite evident to see that uh, I mean, the blank module look exactly like this. There's just a blank front, uh, also a plastic front, but it's just blank, so you can easily drill holes and stuff. And there you will also have this back panel connector here. And then, of course, you don't have anything else, but you can plug in uh, all those one, two, three, four circuit boards uh, into all those uh, slots here. So it's a really nice uh, building platform and the the size is also uh, quite all right. We got a little loudspeaker amplifier chip down there. One of those, uh, yeah, it's a TBAA20. So that's probably just what's driving the the speaker, I guess. I don't understand what is that s stuff, the slimy stuff here, but it looks like it's dry. So that is a little bit weird. We have it here as well around this capacitor. I don't know if you can see here. Shiny slime. That was the volume that is hanging all the way up here, completely isolated. It is grounded here. Goes to all that kind of stuff. I was looking for a voltage reference for the current driver. So I think here is an op amp and some power transistors. So that's probably the current driver. And that one down here is an ICL76504. CPD. I'm a little bit unsure about. The last no it is seven six five oh s c p d yeah the the display is i think this is the classic i c l uh display analog to display driver uh, it's a very famous and super easy to use um chip you see this used all the time. So I kind of like that as well. Here we got the wires for... Yes, there is actually another thing I really would like you to see. I don't know if I am able to get this uh, onto the camera here. But can you see this one here? Is that a little... Let's see, Oh, that was a little loose thing, so now it's done. Good. But here's another thing. There's another one right there. 
Is that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was just <laughs> a hair from a cat or a dog or something like that. Uh, so that definitely is not <laughs> something that is uh, from my place, I must say. And I don't have any here, so I'm sorry about that. Yes, I think that is uh, what I wanted to show you guys uh, on this uh, about this milli ohm meter. So thank you very much for watching, and uh, please come back soon.